Good morning. It's Philip with RTX Honeybees. It's January 31st, 2022, New Year's Eve. I want to wish everybody a happy new year and a prosperous 2023 with their health and their family and their beekeeping. So I just wanted to uh, show you guys how I treat for mites. Um, it's kind of an old, outdated method. I'm going to use it through this year. Um, I'll uh, go ahead and say that it's not the best method available by, by far. You know, I'll probably be moving to the Larabi style or maybe the Instavap at some point. But right now I'm still using the oxalic acid wands. But I've been able to manage my hives and, uh, in a way that has made it actually, you know, somewhat efficient to do so. Just want to take you guys along for that. The weather is 53 degrees, sunny. The bees are just starting to fly. It's 9.45 in the morning. I thought they'd be going by now, but they must have got some good flight time the last couple of days, so they're resting in. I'll show you guys how I do this. I keep my oxalic acid treatment kit in a, a tub like this. Um, it seems to hold everything okay. If I had to do it over again, I'd probably get a slightly bigger tub because it's pretty stuffed full of things. But let me show you what I have in here. And this is totally unscripted, so you're going to see it it's just as I threw the stuff in it last time. So, in here, you know, probably the most important thing you need is your respirator rated to stop organic gases. Um, here are my wands. I use three wands in a method that I learned from Fred Dunn about three years ago. Similar, similar to how I, you know, I've customized it, and you guys will get to see that here in a minute. So there's three wands in here. I will tell you that not all these wands are the same. They sell a 120 watt wand and a 150 watt. I have two 150 watts and 120. This is my 120 watt wand here, and it takes a full three minutes to vaporize everything whereas the 150 watt wands only take about two and a half minutes to vaporize all right there's three wands in there there's uh this is my control switch when i first started doing this you know i was trying to use a egg timer or phone timer it's hard to do phone your phone if you're going to be wearing gloves sometimes so I just came up with this on my own. It's a spring wound timer. Just turn it on and it counts down. You know, I put it in here about two and a half minutes usually. Uh, this right here is a battery voltage uh, reader. Uh, I used to use this on the, you know, empty and full setting, but I learned uh, I learned that. It's better to put it on a voltage setting, and when your voltage drops to a certain, you know, voltage, you need to be getting you a new battery because you're really going to be just, these things eat up batteries. You're going to destroy your battery if you let it drop too much. So once it gets down below about uh, 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 eleven volts, I'm going to switch my battery out. I really don't even let it get to that. It gets down to the low elevens, I'm I switch my battery. Um, I probably need to take this out. This is cooking spray. I used to spray my counting boards with this, but I don't even do that anymore. Here's my oxalic acid right here. This is a cup. I used to uh, submerge the hot irons into water between you know each treatment. But if you've got three going at one time, you don't need to do that. They cool off enough you know, that you don't have to do that. If you were using one, you would want to have some water to cool it off and refill it and reheat it. Um, I have throw an easy check that's never been used. I've got it in case I want to use it and, and I probably will use it eventually, but right now all I do is treat and then come back in about three days or more and count the Baroa drop on each of the counting boards. And I check, I count every 
every colony. This is a cup for measuring out, you know, 300 bees. Once again, I don't use. This is a oven cleaner. I used to clean these irons after they get filthy, but kind of gotten lazy and don't do that anymore either. So probably could take this out of my kit and make some room. Uh, these are little jumpers that connect the battery to my switch. So basically, and I've got two of those, one black and one red. A whole lot of little foamies. An extra jumper because one time my jumpers broke. Anyway, I've got them there in case I need them. Uh, some needle nose pliers that I use for uh, a specific purpose. Maybe I'll show you guys that in a minute. Screwdriver. A couple of my, uh, at least one of my bottom boards requires me to unscrew a thing to get the wand in. That was like the, one of the first generations of my bottom boards. Don't really need that much, but I leave it in here and I end up using it as a hive tool a lot of times. Some matches to light my smoker. I I don't have any. These foamies to seal up the entrance. Some towels. For, uh, you can use those to seal up the entrance or I'll show you what I use those for here in a minute. In the bottom, some of my colonies, some of my early uh, colonies that I bought didn't have a, uh, the bottom boards that I made. So but they did have a screen bottom board. This is just to block off the, the bottom, the screen bottom, and so you can stick your wand in there, do your treatment. This was, I've got an eight frame one, and in the very bottom there, I don't know if you can see it, there's a 10 frame of the same thing. So this is my bottom board. It's actually not the latest version. Uh, I've been developing my bottom board, but it's primarily influenced on my ability to use this oxalic acid method for treatment. Um, but I think it's worked out. Uh, I built these, you know, with the desire that I would put uh, diatomaceous earth in this. So when the hive beetles drop down, it would kill them, or varroa drop down, it would kill them. And I did that on a few, but what I found is there's so much trash that gets in that diatomaceous earth, it actually becomes a sort of a breeding ground for wax moth and these drawers like this just on their own if you don't clean them out they will become they will fill up with with resources that and you will get uh, uh, wax moths nesting and reproducing down in these boxes so if you want to go with a method similar to this you need to make sure you clean these out oh like once a month or so but anyway what I've done is I've made this little old port and I, I just keep that. I, I, I came up with this because when I was using diatomaceous earth, I didn't want to risk the bees getting into that. So this blocked that thing. I don't know if that's necessary if you're not going to use diatomaceous earth or not. You know, but basically, you know, and I've got this piece of metal that I've used contact cement. You know, it's just a metal sample that I cut and put down there. That's just to protect the wood from the heat. You just put this in here like this. And there's a little hook, just something you would, you know, screw into the wall that holds that down. And one of the problems you have with these things is they tend to want to flip over because this handle is kind of heavy. So anyway, you can put it in here and you can put the oxalic acid in it and close it. Or you can actually put the oxalic acid in it and then place it in here. Uh, the reason I have the needle nose pliers is every now and again... I come across one of these hooks. It's hard to get the wand out of when I try to push it sideways. So I'm able to get that and just give that a little bit of a twist to make sure I can get that out. That's why I keep these in my kit. So anyway, you put your, you know, dosage, whatever you guys want to use uh, in there. Turn it on. Shove it in. Let it go for two and a half minutes. And then you start on the next one using another wand. And then a the third one using, by the time you get the, the second one uh, finishes, you know, you can go back to, the, 
and you get the third one started, you can go back to the first one and just keep going down the line. And I found where I can average about four minutes per colony doing this method. You don't have to do the whole wait 10 minutes and start again thing. Um, another method that I've come up with, you know, this drawer right here alone, like doubles the time for making these bottom boards. Another method I've come up with is to make a simpler tray that doesn't have, you know, the hook and the thing, the metal piece. And just simply to take a piece of luon, let's go look at that, piece of luon, it sits in here like this. Okay, now the trick, the key to this is that this extends far enough to support the handle because on these wands, this handle is the heaviest part of it. So if you don't have that extending out, it's going to want to fall down. But let me take the. Oh, and this is cool too. You need to. I, I use this Velcro stripping to just help manage my cords. So if you put this in there like that, see how that just sits there quite nicely? And you can run your wand. That's also why I use the rags because you've got a big gap here where you're going to get be losing a lot of vapor but if you take these towels you can you know block block that off nicely and do your one that's a very simple way you just have to be able to build your bottoms with the ability to support a you know a little piece of plywood i would i almost said cheap plywood but is there such a thing anymore when i first started this stuff was like 11 to 13 dollars a sheet and now it's still at like 23 24 dollars a sheet it hadn't gone down like some of the other plywood all right that's pretty much how that works let me show you guys how i uh hook up the battery you know basically all this is done on the ground but i'll show you guys i use this uh Thunderbolt. It's a 35 amp hour battery. I can get about 10 colonies out of it safely before I need to switch it out when the battery's new. Um, I you probably could get a 15, but I try. I've burned through a couple of these already, and because I pushed them too hard, so I've backed off on how long I'll leave them running. But anyway, you just take this. Take your jumper. Like that to there. Like the negative to there. Hook your wand, red side to, to there. If you'll notice, whenever I hook the battery up, it gave me a reading of 13.3 volts. That's a fairly new battery. And it should read more than 12 volts. Like I said, once it starts to, and when you, when we turn this on, the voltage on it will drop just in use. And I, I'll, I'll go ahead and demonstrate that to you guys. And then the, usually the wand is opposite side of the battery. Uh, so you don't get this tangle of wires. But, so. If I turn this on and I turn it past the where it says to and come back to here, you can see that the voltage dropped, see, to 12. So now it dropped to 11.9. It drops even lower. This is the 120 volt model. So it drops even lower, 11.8. So you can see it, but as soon as it goes off, as soon as it finishes, watch it, it goes back to. See, it's gone back to 12.7. It may even go back to thir all the way up to 13. So anyway, when this thing working is down around 11, or when it's resting at like 12 and a half, 12.3 to 12.5, I switch it out to a new battery because I want to get as much life out of these batteries as I can. All right, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys watch me treat a couple of them, but I won't 
subject you to all of them. I, I've made other videos showing me treating uh, colonies. So uh, just a quick example of kind of maybe you can see a little bit of my workflow. Really important to wear your mask after you get that started. And I'll go around the front and block the entrance. Probably should have done that already. Okay, it clicked, went off, so now I'll unhook this one, and I'll hook up this one. And I'll get it started again. They're most efficient if you can keep the keep it running so whenever that goes off you should have another one ready and get it started kind of stop what you're doing because you save time as long as you can keep your keep at least one of them treating continuously I also Go ahead and place all my counting boards on top of each colony and I have a number right here that indicates which colony it is because I do run different size equipment so these are made for each colony. Pretty standardized for the most part but not every one is in interchangeable. Sometimes I'll write it on the back. That's colony, this is colony 11, colony 12. Right now, there's not a lot for me to do, so you know you could get more ones, more batteries, probably do this even faster. But I find this works pretty well for me. I don't, I don't. There's not a whole lot of just standing around waiting. I think I've given this one, you know, long enough for whatever it is. So I'll go ahead and pull this out. A little bit of vapor coming off of that. I forgot to show you guys this, but these fit down in this little groove of this pull-out drawer. Like that. And then I'll come back and count the mites that drop down onto this. Sometimes it's just 24 hours, which isn't that accurate, but sometimes that's all I have when I'm out here, and sometimes I'll come back in a week or two and count them. I 
I didn't get a real efficient burn on that one. Although it's really not finished. I think I put that clump in there and probably should have busted it up. These colonies out here have been so low in mites. I'm not terribly concerned about that. If they've been showing high ones, I might have redone that one. I'm not going to advise you guys on what dosage to use. My dosage is what I call a lot. Let me get right down to it. Dosage. Treating with supers on, honey supers on. Treating with where you buy your oxalic, all of that. There's not a there's not a way to do that to be fully within the law, I think, and also have great control of your mites. I'll just stop right there with that thought that you see enough discussions on oxalic acid vapor, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Well, I finished treating this morning. At some point, my battery died on the phone, so I uh, just wanted to give you guys a wrap up for this video. Uh, it's kind of getting cloudy this afternoon. I finished treating, went in, took a nap, <laughs> stayed up late last night on the chat with the uh, uh, Bob at uh, Walker Walker B Ranch had a great time talking to these guys. But that chat went on for like four hours. It was a great time, but made me tired today. Thanks a lot, Bob. <laughs> so anyway, got all these colonies treated. Wanted to kind of point out something that I sort of discovered. I should have known all along, but uh, it wouldn't matter if you're using the wands or not, but Oxalic acid, you know, it's corrosive to metal. Um, so a lot of times I'll, uh, you know, prepare those and spill a little bit on the lids. This is what happens to your metal lids. You leave a little bit of oxalic acid anywhere you see. Yeah, that's probably not good for those long term. So. I think I'm going to come out here now and wipe those down. Uh, maybe get a little more life out of my outer covers or my lids. So, anyway, everything went well with my treatment today. Girls are flying pretty good. It's 68 degrees right now. And until next time, Philip Morris, RTX Honeybees. Thanks for watching.